We are in front of the home of Lloyd Kanoma, who's a Golden State Warriors fanatic. Lloyd has been receiving help around the Bay Area to raise money to save his home. And now the Golden State Warriors plan to pitch in. As you follow me along, you see that the city of San Francisco has installed speed bumps to slow down and prevent injuries as skaters come down this hill near Dolores Park. With the recent spike in coronavirus cases, Governor Gavin Newsom has decided to close all indoor restaurants, bars, and hair salons. After speaking with one of the restaurant owners, she's very fearful and unsure of the future of her diner. See, the city of Pittsburgh is doing a peaceful protest. The city of Pittsburgh has came out to show support for the recent death of Vanessa Geeling as she was bludgeoned to death by Aaron David Robinson. Due to COVID-19, California Anti-Scholastic Federation has decided to postpone all sporting events and activities for the fall and winter of 2020. Antioch police are currently investigating a double shooting last night where it happened at 12.30 where a woman was left killed and another man was left critically injured. The man is currently at John Mayer Hospital and the police think that this incident was targeted and they're currently investigating the situation. This is learning what have its pros and cons. Yes, we will continue to do social distancing, but at the same time, not all students have internet access. We are in front of the home of Lloyd Kanoma, who is a Golden State Warriors fanatic. Lloyd has been receiving help around the Bay Area to raise money to save his home. And now the Golden State Warriors plan to pitch in. Lloyd has been rooted in his West Oakland home for five decades. His mother passed away after being diagnosed with stage four cancer, and before her passing, the mortgage was reversed. You know, we didn't know about that. So, so some lady took this, took my mother, didn't know the great mortgage. And that, that, that would be abuse. That's what you know about, like, not about that. Mine's a baby, so I'm not gonna know about that kind of stuff. So the lady took my mama. Golden State Warriors Senior Vice President of Communications, Raymond Ritter, explained how they plan to run the auction. We're calling this our all-star package, and the reason we're calling it our all-star package is because it features something from each of our all-stars, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and Draymond Green. Um, so with this all-star package, you get a, an autographed Steph Curry town jersey, you get an autographed Draymond Green blue icon jersey, and you get an autographed Clay Thompson pair of Antis shoes. And so those are the three all-star items. Additionally, you're gonna get a autographed team basketball signed by our entire team from this past season and our coaching staff. And then uh, the topper is a, you get to have lunch with Coach Kerr, uh, four, four of your friends or four, four people get to have lunch with Coach Kerr someday at, uh, at Chase Center when things get back to normal here. Lloyd needs 350000 to save his home from Championship Mortgage Bank, and so far he has raised $271,893. Due to COVID-19, California Anti-Scholastic Federation has decided to postpone all sporting events and activities for the fall and winter of 2020. CIF Executive Director Ron Nochetti spoke about the changes to the 2020-2021 athletic competition schedule. And I'm sure you've seen the uh, the press release that we put out. And so the, the main change, obviously, was that we went from three seasons of sport uh, to two seasons of sport and delayed the start to kind of the December-January period. Obviously, most of the what were now considered traditional fall sports or, or would begin playing games in January. But uh, they could, depending on the section, uh, be allowed to – practice as early as in December, maybe even play a few games in December, depending on where we're, where we are at that time. Um, you know, in San Francisco, you deal with three different uh, sections. You have the San Francisco section, you have the Central Coast section, and then you have even some schools in the North Coast sections. I think we've got some uh, big hurdles to overcome, but I think it's great that there's something in place for us so these kids can go play. I think uh, a lot of it has to do with us getting prepared. And you know, football is one of the toughest sports that we have to prepare for. We have to be stronger, faster. We have to build that team community. So I think there's a lot of hurdles to overcome. Head coach Abraham Lincoln High School, Philip Ferrigno, also spoke about the idea of social distancing while working out. You know, if we do it right, and if our section, the San Francisco section, and also our schools let us back on campus so we can actually do some social distancing working out, I think we'll be all right and get ahead of it. But right now we're kind of behind, behind all the other counties. 
Not only did the COVID-19 pandemic impact high school sports this upcoming fall and winter, but it may even affect the next level as well. Los Padanos College head football coach Chris Scheif spoke about the potential impact it may have at the next level. Um, but with now us um, taking part in the spring, uh, our season being in the spring, and their season being in the spring, so it's definitely, it's definitely going to hurt us a little bit um, having those uh, seniors on campus. Coach Scheib acknowledges that it will be tough to monitor the players throughout the season once the players return. Uh, you know, honestly, with the NFL, you know, talking football specifically, um, they got a lot of resources to be able to take care of, uh, you know, their players in the bubble and they talk about stuff like that. Same thing at the college level. You know, I know over the last couple of months, there were a lot of uh, Division I schools who were having some issues um, with positive tests and stuff like that. Uh, that that's a tough question for sure. Um, and we, we're trying to take all the precautionary steps, the guidelines to try to make sure our players are safe. Both Coach Ferrigno and Coach Scheib expressed that this is the right decision by the CIF to keep everybody safe and worry about sports once things get better. The city of Pittsburgh has came out to show support for the recent death of Vanessa Geeland as she was blunted to death by Aaron David Robinson. Leslie Gomez organized the protests in Pittsburgh from Marina Boulevard to the National Guard Armory for again and says the Army needs to raise their awareness regarding sexual harassment. What we're here for is to basically let everybody know what was done to Vanessa Guillen. We want to uh, raise attention for sexual harassment. We want to see a change and we just want justice for her, for her and her family. Um, there shouldn't have been any reason why they waited this long, almost two months, to do something. Um, we need to do something bigger, and I just hope that they're able to do a change, because right now, there's not going to be a lot of people wanting to join the Army at this time. The lack of trust that Leslie is referring to is the reoccurrences of men and women coming out after Gillen's death, expressing that they have been sexual harassed as well, but they did not feel comfortable telling anyone because of the possible repercussions. General Scott Eflin said this in a press conference regarding if the Army could be trusted. And please know that every person who raises their right hand to serve their family and their country in uniform deserves to be safe and treated with dignity and respect. To the victims of sexual harassment and assault, we hear you, we believe you, and I encourage you to come forward. The Army will not stop its efforts to eradicate sexual harassment and sexual assault until it no longer exists in our formations because that's the Army standard. Once authorities ran to Robinson, he killed himself. And Cecile Aguilar, the woman who helped Robinson cover up the homicide, has been indicted and may face up to 20 years in federal prison for each count upon conviction. No date has been determined for the start of trial. We've been impacted pretty hard. Uh, we had to lay off most of our staff. We've lost a significant amount of business. A one-on-one -on -one conversation with a diner owner who is fearful for the future of her business. Natalie Cooper, the longtime Lumpy's owner from Pittsburgh, has been impacted by the pandemic. After several months of no dining in and Governor Gavin Newsom's restrictions, we discussed the issues. Right now, I think, okay, do we just continue and suffer a little bit and maybe get behind financially? But in six months when this pandemic ends or whenever it may end, that we will have the business to dig ourselves out of that financial like hole? Or do you just kind of quit while you're even? That's where it's like, it's hard, I think, as an owner, like, do we just continue digging a hole that we don't know if we're ever going to be able to get out of? And that is, it is a huge stress. There is um, loans, there is financial help out there from the SBA um, for businesses right now. Um, but that is then just a loan. We do have to pay that back with interest. So it's hard, like, do you take that risk? If you default on that loan, then the SBA can come in and take your business from Contra Costa Health Services says the average number of newly identified COVID-19 cases has increased from 39 a day to 69. Uh, we hoped that this would only be two, three weeks like they said it was going to be, and now we're 
almost five months in, so <laughs> we're still adjusting to what works best that we can still continue to be here. Um, we did hire all the staff back um, when we thought we were going to open July 1st, so like about two weeks before that, we hired everybody back to get prepared to open July 1st, get everybody trained. Um, we started doing a little bit of uh, patio dining with a little bit of inside dining just to make sure that all of our procedures and training was correct. And then when that date was postponed, we then had to lay everybody off again. So that's what I'm afraid to happen a third time, so I don't want that. So we're just t strictly take out right now. Governor Newsom's tight new business restrictions will affect over 20 counties throughout California, with some of the 80% population of the state.